My name's Joseph Redden with Advanced Control Solution. We got Jake Sigmund with FLIR online. Say hello, Jake. Hi, how's everyone doing? All right. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, FLIR cameras integrated with Cognex Designer. Um, as you can see in our setup here on the screen, uh, we have the FLIR camera looking at these two cups. Uh, these cups, uh, one of them is filled with cold water and hot water. Obviously, you guys can't see that right now with the video. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the programming environment. All right, so what we have here is a live setup. You see we have one cup is showing uh, bright and one cup is showing dark. Um, obviously, the brighter cup is showing a hotter temperature and the darker cup is showing a, a darker or a colder temperature. Uh, Jake, you want to explain a little bit how that works in the FLIR? Yeah, so this camera, this particular camera is an A65, and it's a long wave camera, meaning that we're looking at infrared light, which is typically longer wave than visible light. So the light that's actually hitting the detector in this camera is anywhere from 7.5 micrometers to 14 micrometers. So any light in that wavelength is being absorbed by the detector and calculated into a temperature value. Uh, would you like me to talk a little bit about how that detector works? Yeah, go ahead. So the detector is a small array of what we call microbolometers, and it's a physical response to that infrared light. So as the infrared light hits, hits each microbolometer, there's a physical response that changes the resistance of that semiconductor. And when that physical resistance is changed, it is quantified in a value called counts, which is equivalent to how many infrared waves have hit that detector. We then use an algorithm to co compensate and change that count value into a temperature value, and that's how you get your photo of a thermal photo. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, additionally, each one of those microbolometers is about, its sensitivity is about 90 millifarenheit, meaning that it can detect changes in temperature each pixel of down to 90 million Fahrenheit a piece. Wow, okay, so that's kind of the resolution of, of your temperature sensor is about 90 milli Fahrenheit? Yes, it's not necessarily the accuracy saying mm -hmm. that an object is absolutely that hot, but it is the contrast and that's why you get very good photos. Got it, so you can see here, you know, we got a cup full of hot water and a cup full of cold water and you can definitely tell that one is hotter than the other. Um, so that's very interesting. Uh, and what's some of the ranges that your cameras can detect from, you know, say, uh, Fahrenheit ranges of coldest to hottest? Yes, generally on the low end, a long wave camera can see about negative 40 Celsius or negative 40 Fahrenheit. That's right exactly where they come okay. together. Um, and on the hot end, depending on the model, you can see up to 2000 Celsius or around 3,600 Fahrenheit. Oh, okay. So a real broad range of, you know, obviously different cameras for different temperature ranges, but you can cover pretty much any temperature from negative 40 to 3,600 Fahrenheit. You bet. Got it. Okay, perfect. So that's a, so that's how we're actually able to generate an image uh, using thermal imaging. Uh, what we're able to do in Cognex Designer is take this image, right now it's an 8-bit image, uh, which is a 0 to 255 grayscale image. Uh, we're actually going to convert that from 8-bit uh, all the way to 14-bit. And what this does, I'm going to run my program here. And what this does is, as you can see, it kind of loses the contrast, but that stretches it from 0 to 255 all the way to zero to 65,000 and some change. So you get a lot more data points inside that, in that, inside that contrast range for designer to look at. You can still kind of see our cups here. So here's our hotter cup, here's our colder cup, um, but kind of the background has uh, kind of been washed out a little bit. Now, if you get a camera that has a much shorter range, I believe our camera that we have is going somewhere between zero and 300 C, if I remember correctly talking to your engineer, uh, which is a pretty big range when we're only talking about uh, you know, less than a hundred degrees Celsius. So, uh, if we got a different camera, these would pop a lot more, but what we have done is in our vision pro, uh, tool block, 
we've actually created a histogram tool and you can see I'll open that up. Here's our histogram tool. And what a histogram tool does is it just looks and averages uh, the, num the pixel value inside that search region. So we put it on our hot cup here. We're running that histogram tool into a uh, converter block that is outputting a, uh, just taking that pixel value and converting it into a Fahrenheit. And you can see right here, that little, uh, the reading of our temperature output is 127.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if I take that histogram tool and I move my block over to the cold cup, Then I rerun my tool. Now you can see our temperature output is now 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So able to see that those differences in temperatures, um, differing applications we can uh, we can use with this. If you wanted to look at a at a an area, uh, instead of using a single temperature probe uh, on a say a tank to make sure there's no temperature stratification inside that tank, uh, we can put one camera uh, and look at multiple different areas. I can just add more histogram tools as necessary. Uh, to look at different areas. If you wanted to look at inside of a room, uh, make sure that a, uh, a room is uh, the right temperature or that you got, maybe you got different testing stations and you gotta maintain a certain temperature in those testing stations. You know, we can look at specific areas and ignore the rest. Uh, Jake, do you got any other applications that you think uh, that you guys have used this on? Yeah, so typically we see kind of three cornerstones with these infrared cameras. Mm -hmm. One being critical asset monitoring. So whether that's monitoring very important equipment such as transformers or turbines or battery storage for temperature profile trends. Mm -hmm. um, it can also be used for early fire detection. So mm. writing your own logic to see significant changes in, in an environment that might indicate a fire. Um, and, and most importantly, like you said, quality assurance. So right. seeing different thermal patterns, um, I think a lot of people don't understand that, you know, there's quite a bit of heat transfer. In every molecule above zero degrees Kelvin moves. So if there's any molecules that are moving, it's releasing its own form of temperature. Um, so you can see sealing applications, injection molding, mm -hmm. uh, welds, automobile, food and beverage for packaging. I mean. And the list goes on and on. Right. Absolutely. So as long as, and you know, it really, you know, saves this over say a single point, uh, temperature comp is I can look at an entire area and monitor different, you know, monitor different areas with one camera and get a temperature feedback from all of those areas. Um, which ease of programming, ease of installation, all that good stuff. Uh, just to show some of the difference, some of the different things that is you know really unique with FLIR. I'm going to turn this back to 8-bit just so that we can see the image a little bit, a little bit easier here. I'm going to go live. Just some unique features and how quickly, how quickly these images uh, update. So here we have a live image. You can see my hand in the uh, field of view. Um, I have a piece of plastic here. And so you can see I have this piece of plastic in the in the field of view blocking uh blocking the cups but just look as i touch the plastic how quickly how quickly the camera picks up on the heat signature so i just barely touched that piece of plastic and you can already see my my fingerprints on there so that's just how quick and how uh how resolute these cameras are to actually pick up a temperature change difference you know conversely if i take if i take my hot cup and I pour it into the cold cup without pouring it all over me. You can actually see the hot water mixing with the cold water. So these cameras are very, very, these cameras are very, very resolute, very, very perceptive to even ch tiny changes in temperature. Um, but obviously we can also take those cameras and put them into the Cognex designer software and output real world temperatures for that can go to your PLCs, to monitoring systems, MES systems, anything like that to, uh, for tracking all that kind of good stuff. All right. Jake, anything else you'd like to add? I think that's all for me. All right. Sounds good. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to ACS. Um, one of our sales engineers or technical experts will get back with you. Jake, we appreciate your time today. 
Uh, and we will see you on the next video. Thanks for having me. Thanks.